Nancy Kovac rose to fame after portraying Medea in Jason and the Argonauts. In addition to being a successful yet reluctant film star, she was also known for her work on iconic TV shows like Batman, Star Trek, and Bewitched. She was considered the ultimate dream girl back in the 60s, despite the fact her screen time was typically pretty minimal. Her appearances were always memorable, though, as they typically revolved around sultry scenes that highlighted her sex appeal. She had a jaw-dropping physique, the glamorous attitude of a diva, and phenomenal cheekbones that were the envy of many. She had what we would call the it factor. Additionally, she got the chance to work alongside legendary icons like the Three Stooges, Vincent Price, Dean Martin, and even Elvis. When she was younger, she never had any real desire to become a big-time movie star. Instead, she grew up dreaming about becoming a model. In case you've ever been curious whatever happened to her, this is Nancy Kovac's story. So stick around, you won't be disappointed. One Unforgettable Wedding Nancy was born on March 11, 1935, in Flint, Michigan. She's not only known for her beauty, but she's also quite the brainiac. She attended the University of Michigan when she was just 15. She was hired on as a radio DJ at 16 and graduated from college at 19. By the time she was 20, she'd already won at least eight beauty pageants. She was discovered by a talent agent when she was attending a wedding during the late 50s in New York City. After pursuing a modeling career, she eventually landed the opportunity to be the Glee girl on The Jackie Gleason Show. And like that, a star was born. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. And stick around, we're going to delve deeper into Nancy's life and career. Nancy's career really took off in the 50s. Eventually, she got the chance to appear on The Dave Garraway Show, Beat the Clock, and The Today Show. She scored her first stage role in the Broadway production of The Disenchanted, which eventually led her to signing with Columbia in 1959. From there, her career continued to blossom. She landed her first major TV role in the United States Steel Hour variety show and then made her film debut in 1959's Strangers When We Meet opposite Kirk Douglas. Kovac had numerous risque roles. In the 60s, Kovac starred in quite a few movies and TV shows. Some notable roles included parts in fantasy and adventure films like The Wild Westerners in 1962 and Great Sioux Massacre in 1965. You might also remember her from 1966's Tarzan and the Valley of Gold. She often played the breathtakingly beautiful love interest that the star of those films would fawn over. Her big breakthrough moment came in 1963 when she co-starred in the classic horror film Diary of a Madman as the seductive model Odette Malat Duclos. Kovac was incredible as Medea. A lot of people would probably say her most significant role was in 1963's Jason and the Argonauts. Even though the film was a disappointment from a critical perspective, Ray Harryhausen's stop-motion animation elevated it to cult classic status. Sure, Kovac really couldn't compete with the animated Hydra, Talos, and Skeleton Warriors, but as far as the human characters in that film, she was the standout. As Kolkis Medea, the High Priestess, she enchanted male audiences everywhere with her erotic dancing. A couple of years later, she co-starred with Matt Helm in the parody spy film The Silencers as the voluptuous villain Barbara, a fierce, stone-faced killer who seduces her enemies before ending them. Kovac cameoed in some of the biggest films of the 60s. For the remainder of the 60s, Kovac continued to star alongside some of the most prolific stars on TV. One of her most memorable roles was Sheila Summers, Darren Stevens' ex-girlfriend and Samantha's arch-enemy on Bewitched. Kovac later returned to the show to play Cleo Vanita in the episode Cousin Serena Strikes Again. On Star Trek, she played the interstellar seductress Nona. Bach, Captain Kirk, and the rest of the crew of the USS Enterprise come across her on a distant planet in the 1968 episode A Private Little War. She also played Rita Mitchell, a fictional actress who goes on a date with Tony on I Dream of Jeannie. Nancy's Early Retirement and Marriage Kovac made her final appearance in a feature film in 1969. She played the wife of an astronaut in the science fiction film Marooned. She kept acting in TV shows throughout the early 70s, appearing in shows like Love, American Style, Ellery Queen, and Mannix. Her last two credits were both in 1976 for the shows Bronk and Cannon. In 69, while filming Marooned, she was introduced to Zubin Mehta, a music director of the LA Philharmonic. After a brief courtship, they married. She officially retired from acting and has since lived a relatively private life with her husband. 
Kovac briefly appeared in the news in the 90s when she sued her former personal assistant, Susan McDougall, for allegedly embezzling money. She was acquitted of those charges in 1998. A countersuit filed by McDougall in 99 for malicious prosecution ended in a settlement. During those court proceedings, a picture of Kovac emerged that highlighted her tendency to spend lavishly. She loved flaunting her finances. When Nancy needed some plumbing work done at her Italian villa, she didn't think twice before flying out her favorite plumber from LA to get the job done. Then there was the time she shelled out a hundred grand for her cousin's wedding, complete with an extravagant gazebo and koi pond. She also paid for that same cousin's entire college tuition. Years later, she brought her dog walker's 12-year-old niece into her house to raise as her own. She spared no expense sending her out to costly boarding schools and summer camps, and even hired a personal shopper to take her out to buy new clothes whenever she wanted. Nancy is undeniably a giving person, but some might say she's generous to a fault. When McDougall and Kovac faced off in court over those embezzlement charges, a different picture began to emerge. While Kovac insisted McDougall had intentionally pilfered her finances, the defense attorney suggested Kovac had simply turned her into a scapegoat to blame for her own financial mismanagement. The two women were once friends, but everything turned sour after they had a falling out. McDougall may have tried to paint a picture of herself as a victim, but her past indiscretions certainly aroused some suspicions. She was a former business partner with Hillary and Bill Clinton. McDougall had previously served 18 months after being convicted of wire fraud and for refusing to talk to a grand jury about her business dealings with the Clinton family in regards to the Whitewater scandal. The embezzlement case had nothing to do with that scandal, but her conviction in that case certainly raised a lot of red flags. Kovac accused her of forging her name on a credit card application and racking up $90,000 in charges as well as forging checks for more than $60,000 in personal expenses. McDougall maintained that she was authorized to make all those purchases, and the majority of those expenses were for Darla Motley, the young girl Kovac had taken in as her own. Although the court testimony was full of irregularities and contradictions, and McDougal couldn't get her story straight, the case was eventually thrown out of court. What do you think about the case between Nancy Kovac and Susan McDougal? Who do you think was right? And what's your favorite Nancy Kovac role? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.